Channel's Week in Review, Israel Independence Day, and Jewish American Heritage Month. It's the Jewish news that's changing your world on this episode of the Week in Review. Hello, and welcome to the Jewish Channel's Week in Review. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. This week in Israel marked Independence Day and Memorial Day for the Jewish state's 62nd anniversary. Among the creative celebrations were this display during the official military ceremony for Israel Independence Day, or Yom Ha'atzma'ut. Marching in formation, it commemorated the 62nd Independence Day and told the story of Israel's founding through various images. In particular, the ceremony celebrated the 150th anniversary of the birth of early Zionist Theodore Herzl, and marchers even formed a picture of Herzl himself for the final display. We'll have more regarding Israeli Memorial Day later in the newscast. Some of the biggest news in the American Jewish community in recent weeks has surrounded a single woman in the Bronx. Rabbi Sarah Hurwitz of Riverdale is the first Orthodox woman to be ordained as a rabbi. And recent uproar over the change of her title to that of Rabbi, the female equivalent of rabbi, is a big issue heading into next week's convention of the Rabbinical Council of America, the Orthodox rabbinic group that includes the rabbi who ordained Hurwitz, Rabbi Avi Weiss. Expected to be debated are two proposed amendments to the group's constitution that would forestall rabbis from making similar innovations before seeking consensus in the future. The JTA reports that the amendments aren't expected to pass, but they nonetheless offer insight into the kind of opposition the first female Orthodox rabbi is seeing from this mainstream Orthodox rabbinical group. The full text of the amendments are available at our blog, newsdesk.tjctv.com. In other news, if you've never heard of Jewish American Heritage Month, Christian Neen reports on that announcement. I'm here at Congregation Shariath Israel on Manhattan's Upper West Side. The oldest Jewish congregation established in North America way back in 1654 and the perfect place to announce the launch of Jewish American Heritage Month taking place throughout May. Jewish American Heritage Month will include partnerships with the A&E Television Network and dozens of events around the country. 2010 marks the first year that Jewish American Heritage Month has a dedicated website, as well as a partnership with the A&E Network's Bio Channel to air biographies of important Jewish Americans. A&E Director of Corporate Outreach Kim Gilmore told TJC about the importance of highlighting Jewish heritage. I think all throughout American history, we, there are moments in which Jewish Americans have played critical roles. And that in order to understand the full fabric of American history, we have to understand the roles of Jewish Americans. That will be done through BIO's partnership with educators across the country. When I looked at the Jewish American Heritage Month website, I saw so many things that I thought teachers would want to integrate into their lesson plans because the contributions of Jewish Americans really hit so many different areas that people are already teaching from music to the Civil War. That sentiment of educating all Americans about Jewish heritage was echoed by Sid Lapidus from the American Jewish Historical Society, which is also participating in putting together this year's programs. I think it's the aim to uh, focus on both people who are Jewish and I think even more importantly people who are not Jewish to help understand what the Jewish heritage in America has meant, whether it be in government, in the arts, in law, in business, in any avenue of life that you think about, uh, America would not be the same without the Jewish contribution. During the launch event, the month's national coordinator, Abby Schwartz, presented a copy of the 2006 presidential proclamation which created Jewish American Heritage Month to share with Israel's rabbi Chaim Angel, before reading aloud a citywide proclamation from Mayor Michael Bloomberg. This month, New Yorkers of all backgrounds can join their neighbors in celebrating Jewish American heritage and the richness and variety of our shared cultural, cultural life. Now, therefore, I'm Michael R. Bloomberg, Mayor of the City of New York, in recognition of the contributions of Jewish Americans to our civic life, do hereby proclaim May 2010 in the City of New York as Jewish American Heritage Month. Sherith Israel's rabbi then told event attendees about the importance of New York City's first Jews. The 23 members who came here in 1654 really were hardy people who had been storm-tossed and that were fleeing Brazil, Recife, Brazil. They came up here looking for refuge. Peter Stuyvesant gave them a very hard time, and the rest is history. But the fact is that they made it and really stuck it out and built a community, not only the largest and most successful Jewish community in, in world history, but really one which helped pave the way for American democracy. Publicity for this year's event is larger than in years past, thanks in part to Schwartz, who came on last June as Jewish American Heritage Month's first national coordinator, thanks to a grant but she said getting the word out is still a challenge. Just since I've been on the job, we've been able to garner what we already know are 55 or 60 events that are happening nationwide. And I'm sure that's only 
a, a small percentage of what is, is happening, but until those people find us or we find them, it's, it's kind of a little bit of detective work. So it's a daily, day by day kind of experience getting this on people's uh, agenda and on their radar. The month has a corporate sponsor this year, Manischewitz. And Alan Bankier, president of TMCI, which owns the iconic Jewish food company, told TJC about the decision to sponsor May's programming. The history of Manischewitz is so intertwined with Jewish American heritage, with Jewish American uh, tradition, and it just is absolutely natural. And naturally, Bankier used the subject of food as the subject of his launch event speech. Food, as you know, is not only a Jewish experience, but a universal uh, experience. And uh, Jewish food in America uh, has become something that is completely intertwined in, uh, in, in our heritage. Not only in Jewish tradition, recently uh, I, I heard a song, something like, um, uh, they, they tried to kill us, we survived, now let's eat. Of course, our, our rabbis may have a little bit more uh, interpretation on that, but it just shows how, how important food is in our, in our, in our Jewish uh, uh, tradition and, and culture. Wishing you a happy Jewish American Heritage Month. Reporting for the Jewish Channel, I'm Christian Needen. Thank you, Christian. One of the most fascinating things about Israel is how Memorial Day there is observed. Memorial Day, or Yom Hazikaron in Hebrew, famously invokes a moment of silence in which all activity in Israel stops for a full 60 seconds. People stand at attention while a siren blares, and when it concludes, life resumes as normal. Thanks to YouTube and other sites, for the first time we can see many videos of that fascinating 60 seconds. Here's a presentation by our own Stephen Galladay. That's all for this week. For more news and analysis from the Jewish Channel during the week, please check out our blog at newsdesk.tjctv.com. From all of us here at the Jewish Channel, be well. The Jewish Channel is available on cable. Iowa Optimum Cable Channel 291, Time Warner Cable Channel 528, RCN Channel 268, Verizon Fios Channel 900, and Cox Cable Channel 1. For more information, visit tjctv.com.